Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Brian Birch from Digital Design House and this is part two in the photo restoration series uh, for Photoshop. Today we're going to be working in the clone stamp tool and as you saw in the first series, uh, the first part of the series, uh, we were working with the healing brush which is a little bit similar um, but the clone stamp is one of the ones I use primarily. Um, let me just remind you real quick that I use the Intuos 4 uh, Wacom tablet and I work in Photoshop CS4. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer just like we did in the uh, the very first video. Uh, we're going to duplicate this layer so we have something to work on that's not the original. Uh, leave it name background copy for right now but you can name it whatever you want. Um, we'll leave this one locked that way we can't mess it up and we're going to come over here to our magnifying glass I'm going to zoom in, go and click on the clone stamp tool and what the clone stamp tool is you select an area it will Photoshop will then take that sample selection kind of like a swatch and put it wherever you draw your secondary line at so for example I'm going to go right here below this crack and I'm going to click alt you'll see the crosshair come up um, then I'm going to touch the screen or left click. Now I've selected that area, I let go of the Alt key. Now I've selected this area. Then I roll over top of the crack and what it's going to basically do is take this area here and move it up to here. Um, and in Photoshop CS4 and CS5 uh, there's a great new feature. It gives you a preview of, of what the uh, cloned area is going to look like before you start to, to paint with it. So if you have a mouse then you're going to left click or you just use your pen and paint. Um, so you would left click and hold it down and you just color out the crack. And if you look just below it you'll see the little crosshair. Um, so it's cloning that area and putting it where the circle is. And there you go and come back here and same thing now where it really gets technical is when you start to work with different opacities uh, and that's really what separates the good clone stamping from bad clone, clone stamping is changing your opacities because um, not everything is as dark or as vibrant as other areas so your selection areas are crucial these are things that just take time to get used to also when you're trying to match a line for example let me uh, let me zoom out right here and I'll come in here on the shoulder um, when you're trying to match something like this where a large portion of the information is missing um, you need to keep this line in order there's a couple different ways of doing this um, if you're going to use the clone stamp tool, uh, Photoshop and CS4 and CS5 with the preview button uh, make it a lot easier to work with. So what we're going to do is just come right here. We're going to Alt to get our crosshair tap down right on the edge. Now if you look, I have the preview in the little circle. And I can tell that I'm perfectly lined up right there. So then I just left click and start painting and I can do it again do it again okay so you kinda get the idea on what I'm doing there now you can't do this all the way up obviously because the shoulder has um, uh, different gradients in it you can't just paint 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 because you'll wind up with the same uh, color um, and imperfections in the photo up in here. So what you're going to do is this is where your opacities come in. Change the opacity. Play around with it. Um, you can always control Z and uh, undo that, that line or uh, even go up to edit and step backwards which is uh, alt control Z. Um, you can step back quite a few spaces so quite a few actions but 
if you change your opacity that way you can change the color so let's say that I wanted to put a little shadow in um, right here I could take this area because I only have 16 percent opacity I change that down actually let's go down to 10 um, and I'm going to bump the feather to about 50 percent up the diameter just a touch and what we're going to do is alt and tap right there or click and that will select this little area let go of the alt key now I have that little area to paint with now in the preview in CS4 um, it shows it as full opacity but that's not actually what's going to lay down so if you look our opacity is only 10 percent so when I start to paint you almost see nothing because it's only 10 percent but pick up your pen or uh, let go of your let go of your mouse and then left click or tap your pen again and paint again and just keep doing it over and over and what you'll wind up doing is you'll start to see it gets darker now there's a couple different ways of doing this you can always come over and use the burn tool but I wanted to show you the the clone stamp tool um, it's just ways of blending colors um, trying to make things match because the photo is not perfect and what you don't want is if you look what you don't want is you don't want a perfect photo here and not over here um, you want to try to make it look right because these old photos are not perfect um, so it's entirely up to you and it takes a while to get used to this so say right here uh, I'm going to fix this little edge I'm going to come up to my clone stamp tool and uh, I'm going to change that back to about 85 that's typically where I sit um, for most of my work I leave it about 85 percent uh, on the feather um, we'll bump the uh, diameter down just a touch and bring the opacity up to about 90 percent so there you go we're going to alt we're going to click pick up let go of the alt key so now we have the edge that we need just drop down start painting now if you notice it's not right um, which is fine you just kind of want to get rid of some of this area in here and you can alt click um, and you'll get really fast at this and it's okay if things don't work out usually what I'll do is I'll come through and I'll just alt click just kind of bulk stuff out and you'll start to see this clone stamping um, pattern develop uh, when you when you do quick uh, clone stamping like that this is one of the signs of a of an amateur at this uh, they'll leave those those little duplication marks so in order to get away from those I'm gonna bring these up so I can um, uh, I want to darken that so you can really get an idea of what what duplication marks look like um, this is just real quick okay so you can kind of see the duplication marks uh, here 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 and all these um, if I'm going to fix these duplication marks in here I'm going to change this down to about 10 percent go back up to normal and I'm going to select an area and I'm going to start painting and I won't paint completely up because then I'm just carrying out the duplication marks. So what I'll do is I'll just pick a spot here and I'll paint this out here. And the blending is what takes the, the actual time. Anybody can use the clone stamp tool. It takes time to make it look good. Um, and that only comes from practice. Um, but just alt select select an area and basically you're using that to paint with um, and it's entirely up to you um, just always remember that for the most part when you're using clone stamp 85 or 95 percent um, on the hardness and don't go anything below that because what it does is you can see right here even at 85 it tends to blur um, I never go strictly at a hundred percent so 95 90 85 nothing below that um, 
unless it really needs to be so anyway that's the uh, clone stamp tool uh, the basics of how to use it and actually now that we're zoomed out you can you can see how bad the uh, the duplication is um, with the bad areas uh, right here so it gives you a general idea of how to use the clone stamp tool um, hope that helped and I will see you on the next one